Meet Dahlia Panescu, a 36-year-old social media consultant. I really love living in New York City. She's thinking about freezing her eggs. Egg freezing has become mainstream for only about 10 years, but the popularity has been skyrocketing. A BBC report says egg retrieval increased by almost 40% from the pre-pandemic levels in the U.S. More women than ever are considering it, but is it worth it? We brought in two experts to help Dahlia decide. Dr. James Griffo is one of the top fertility doctors in the country. Serena Kerrigan is a 28-year-old influencer, and she just recently froze her eggs. They will sit down with Dahlia and answer her burning questions about the process. At the end of the day, Dahlia will have to tell us, Should I freeze my eggs? I'm in my mid-30s now, and I know that I very much would like to have a child. I'm not currently in a relationship. Freezing my eggs might just give me a little bit of a longer opportunity to figure that out. So Serena, I'd love to begin with you. When did you go through egg freezing and what was that experience like for you? I just went through it last month actually. I had a really great experience doing it. I'm 28 years old and like you, I'm not in a serious relationship. I've always been someone who's really focused on my career and not wanting to rush. I'm not ready to be a parent right at this present moment, but I know that's something that I want to do in the future. I was lucky because I was I'm still, you know, considered young in terms of the quality of the eggs. I'm also sitting next to a doctor, so like I'm not going to go deep in the science behind it, but the younger you are, the better your egg quality is. So I think the problem with this whole topic is that people aren't given the information. They see it as a last resort instead of seeing it as something that's preventative or something that is like not so reactive. Because usually by the time that women want to do it, the chances of getting healthy, uh, mature eggs um, decreases. I thought it was something that was typically branded as arduous, painful. I was going to gain a ton of weight. I was going to be super moody, hormonal, emotional. Uh, that it was really lengthy process, super invasive. I had the opposite experience. It was two weeks long. I found the needle to be as thin as like a strand of my hair. Like I was emotional for sure. I definitely was like hornier, but like nothing that I couldn't handle. And then when it came for the actual um, surgery, Egg retrieval. Egg retrieval. Thank you, <coughs> doctor. When it came out, time for the egg retrieval, it was. 30 minutes, I was out. They asked me, where do I want to go on vacation? And I said, the Maldives. And I thought I was there for like a second, um, but I wasn't. I got my eggs out and and it, it ended up being successful. It's just very expensive. It's, it's very expensive. So to me, that is like ultimately the biggest deterrent. Right. I don't really see if you can afford it, if your workplace will cover it through health insurance, like why you wouldn't do it. And ballpark, how much are we talking? It's close to, it could be, I mean, it ranges, but like 15 to 20 grand. Okay. It's a lot of money. But like a lot of places do cover it, mm -hmm. but people don't ask. I know there's places that people like fought for it to get covered by their health insurance. It's good to know. Thank you so much. Um, so Dr. Griffo, what do you think women should know, women like me, uh, when they begin considering egg freezing? Well, you just have to look at the history of how we're building our families. Like I started in this field in 1984, and the average age at first birth for women was 19. And in 2016, in the United States, the average age was 26, so we went seven years in about 30 years. <laughs> and in the last five years, we went to 30. In New York City, it's more like mid-30s, late-30s for first baby. One of the things I've seen change in my career is now we're like family planners. We don't just talk about like, let's get you a baby. It's like, what is your family plan? Because, you know, when you start at 38 and you struggle to have your first, you're gonna be 40, 42 for your second and you may never have your second. Right. And so that's why in 1999, we spent four years freezing and thawing mouse eggs, getting really good at freezing eggs. And just recently, we published the largest, longest running study of freezing and thawing eggs, 15 years of data, 611 patients who had frozen eggs and then used them. And what we found was age mattered. The mean age of those patients, still too old, 38. That's not the optimal age to freeze, it's younger. But at 38, if women were under 38, 51% of them who froze and thawed their eggs got a baby. If they had more than 20 eggs, 70% got a baby. Now you say, well, that's not very good. You should be 100% if you have that many eggs. A 25-year-old egg donor has a 58% baby rate. Why would you expect an older woman to have better results than a 25-year-old egg donor? And that's the myth. People don't fully understand how hard it can be to get pregnant mm -hmm. and how much age affects it. 
And this generation of women are now starting to learn firsthand because as a young woman, you're told, oh, you're in control. You'll, you'll have your baby whenever you're ready, don't worry. No one talked to you about the clock, except they did, but they never explained what it really <laughs> was. You have a limited pool of eggs. They don't all make healthy embryos. In fact, most don't. And the older your pool of eggs, the less likely it is to get that one good embryo. Now, overall, 40% of the patients had a baby, which is why the New York Times described it as sobering. Well, I mean, if the average age is 38, and most of the patients, 40% of the patients were over 40, you're not gonna get, <laughs> not gonna get better success rate than that. That's pretty good success rate. I mean, an IVF cycle in a 40-year-old woman is, is 25%. And many women who are having a child, when they're 40, a lot of them end up doing IVF um, because it's the best way to get pregnant, most efficient way to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And it all has to do with how many eggs it takes to make one good embryo, and it's a lot bigger number than you think. So you're trying at age 40, you go through a year's worth of eggs, 12 eggs. Half the patients don't make one good embryo from those 12 eggs at 40. The other half do, but only about 60% of healthy embryos make a baby. So you go a whole year and not have a baby at 40. Plus there's the miscarriage problem. Older eggs miscarry more. And no, it's not 100% successful. It never will be. Not everybody's going to get a baby, but guess what? One in eight women are infertile. Some of the egg freezers we're treating are already infertile women. They just don't know. They haven't tried because that's the only way to find out. And you're right. The biggest barrier is cost because mm -hmm. um, it is really expensive. It's really expensive to do, especially if you do it properly. The amount of time, energy, and effort and equipment is, is part of it. Storage costs. Yeah. But it's tough because you don't know the trajectory of your life. You don't know if you're going to need them at all. So many of our patients never use their eggs because they didn't need them. Mm -hmm. Many of our patients wouldn't have a family if they hadn't frozen their eggs. I think also there's just not enough information about it. Like when I was posting um, on my TikTok and my Instagram about this process, I like literally hundreds of women reached out to me thanking me for even talking about it. And I just don't, I didn't understand why it was so taboo. Like why is this such a secretive thing when I think the more information you have, the more power you have to make this kind of decision. You know, there's an age where it's too young because right, right. you may never need those eggs and you right. go through the process. And it's so, so expensive. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think probably somewhere between late 20s, early 30s is probably the optimal time. Mm -hmm. uh, except, you know, there's a lot of women showing up, they're 36, 37, 38. They have pretty good results, and they're more, much more likely to need their eggs, if not for their first child, maybe their second, just by yeah. the trajectory of one's life right. when you think about okay, I'm 36, I'm not married, I'm not ready to have a child yet, and like, when am I gonna have this child? Right. How long is that gonna take? And then what about the second child? Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of dialogue that needs to go on. You need to really be Think. thoughtful. Yeah. And so, you know, should is not a word that I, I would ever use. It's like, it's personal, it's yeah. not medical. It's not a prescription the doctor writes. It's look at your life, look at what your goals are, People who plan are more likely to achieve their goals than people who don't plan. Just because we can do this doesn't mean everybody <laughs> should. If it was free, 100% successful, and didn't require anesthesia, everyone should should do right. it. Um, but it's just not the reality of it. It's not like it's hopeless if you don't have eggs in the freezer and you're older. Because a lot, most of my patients are 39, 40, having their first baby. And if IVF doesn't work, they do other things and still have their families. But most people want their own eggs. It's important that you realize it's not a box you check and okay, I'm done, I don't have to worry. You still worry. It doesn't take away your worry. I mean, you still worry about the clock, you still think about it. You know it's not 100%, and, but it sure gives you a much better chance because your fertile future is all about chances of getting one good egg that makes one good embryo that makes the baby. And no one's ever talked to you like that. They've always said, oh, you have sex one time, you'll be pregnant. You know, and it's like, that's not real. <laughs> it happens because any one cycle you can, but it's not the most likely thing. Serena, I was wondering, how many different doctors did you speak with before you chose the facility that you went with? And what is it that you were looking for when you were talking to them? Uh, just one. I went in for an informational, and so I ended up doing an Instagram Live with the head doctor there. And I just fell in love with her in the place, honestly. It kind of surprised me how emotional I got through this process. You had mentioned your followers asking you um, a lot of questions or telling you how happy they were. What are some of the things that they have mentioned? A lot of it has to do with the weight gain, okay. like, or the timing, how invasive it is, the cost. It's so funny, that New York Times article that you mentioned gets referenced all the time. People, you know, say, this isn't actually effective, it won't work, you know, like, you're too young. I got that a lot. But I'm just like, you're not a doctor, and if you are, great, you're not my doctor. Yeah. You know, I think it's important <laughs> to get your information from people who actually went to medical school. Yeah. Well, and on that note, Dr. Griffo, I'm wondering, what are some of the risks 
and the side effects about um, that you know come with egg freezing. Yeah, I mean, I would say most of the patients who do it are surprised that, that they thought it wasn't as bad as they had read. Okay. Um, but it's not a walk in the park, and it's not the easiest thing you'll ever do in your life, and it's not fun. The thing that's good about it, you know, the egg freezers are different than the infertility patients because it's a more positive experience mm -hmm. because you're doing something positive, you're doing something proactive for your future. Mm -hmm. You know, the elephant in the room in every consult is, what if I never have a baby? And that's always in the backdrop. because so you talk about emotion. That's what it like, was. It's like yeah. no one says that. No mm -hmm. one ever talks. It's like you go to your cancer specialist, what, what, what's my chance of dying? Uh, most people don't ask that. And it's the same thing with the fertility specialist. Like, well, what if this doesn't work? Is always the question that's there, but never is asked. Okay. Um, and, and so that's what raises your emotion, because that's not your plan, mm -hmm. to n not ever have a child. Right. And that's why you're there, so you can have one. In terms of the medications, they're safe. They've been around for a long time. They're, the egg retrieval is incredibly safe. It is uncomfortable. Um, I've done it on patients awake. I had a doctor, a physician patient who wanted to go to the office that day and didn't want anesthesia. anesthesia. I took 18 eggs out her and she went to work two, two hours later um, because it's not that invasive. However, you can have significant side effects. You can have some internal bleeding that causes a lot of pain. You're going to be bloated. If you get a lot of eggs, you're going to have more symptoms. It's going to take a while f for you to recover, so you may spend a few days at home in bed. Um, most people go to work the next day after the retrieval. Um, everybody's different in their experience, though. Some patients are really unhappy about it. Most patients are pleasantly surprised. Um, and then different cycles are different. And one of the things we showed in our 15-year our follow-up, many of our patients did more than one cycle. And we found no matter how many eggs you got the first cycle, if you did a second cycle, you always got a better baby rate at the end because we have actual data of patients using them and what's the outcome. And part of the reason for that is you can get a cycle where the eggs just aren't that good. And you can do another cycle and have really good batch of eggs and you don't know it until you use them. Mm -hmm. So you can't go back in time and get them. Uh, and that's, that's part of the problem and part of the uncertainty and also part of the dissatisfaction with it. I think the expectation is this should be 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree, it should be. But you know, Mother Nature has a different I mean, <laughs> idea that, in mind. Also, the fact yeah. that we can even do this is just unbelievable. Like it's, it's at why all. We, it's like, why we spent thirty years doing research <laughs> exactly. on it. Because, but the trend is so clear. I mean, the older you are having a baby, the harder it is, and the more difficult. This is a way to treat the expected fertility, the infertility that's going to happen mm -hmm. by being proactive, and it allows women to you know, level the playing field with men. Men don't ever experience what it's like to have a clock. We, we never even think that way. Um, it, it's like so, it's such a foreign concept. You say it to a guy that just like, what are you talking about? Yeah, uh, because we, we don't think that way. Because we have germ cells. We're making fresh sperm every 90 days. We have all new sperm. We can be 80 and have a child. We know. Pretty much <laughs> age, yeah, pretty much though, for women, age 42 and older, you're really, if you're going to have a baby at that age, you're going to be really lucky, or you froze eggs, froze embryos, or did egg donor. So it's only um, 42 now, you're saying. Well, I mean, <laughs> look, you could, I, there's a 47-year-old who gets, uh, gets a natural pregnancy. You'll read about every single yeah. one of them. In 30 years of practice, I know five women over the age of 44, in other words, four, 44 and older, who had a, nat a pregnancy with their eggs at their age, whether it was assisted, whether it was natural, whether it was... You know, at that age, okay. you just don't have many babies when you're over 42, 43, 44. That makes sense. It's possible and, and not predictable and not a family plan if you want to yeah. be sure you get, a, <laughs> you get the outcome. That definitely um, makes sense. So, I mean, that's part of it. So, you know, you look at the trajectory of your life, you, you're going to be having your first or second child, late 30s, early 40s, you know, you, you may not be successful. Yeah. Um, I feel like something that wasn't discussed a lot when I did it is is how common a second cycle is, like how common it is to do that. So is that something you're considering? I think so because of the number of children that I want. Okay. So I want to have that, and also just because of what uh -huh. our well, doctor said. Well, we have we have a lot of data. It's age dependent, and you know, a 28 year old freezes eggs. For every six or seven eggs that you make, you could expect to get one chromosomally healthy embryo of which 60% of those make a baby. So right. like six eggs doesn't guarantee a baby. It gives you a pretty darn good chance. Right. Um, so you need a lot of eggs if you're talking about more, more than, than one. more than one. You know, some people are lucky. Some some get more good embryos out of the eggs that they have than others. Mm -hmm. But you, you don't know until you, you know. You don't know. That's why so it's you, you, give it So you extrapolate from other people's data. What people did before was they extrapolated from a model that was completely incorrect. Right. Like people who try to predict the future with models 
will almost always be wrong. Now we have actual data, and we can use the data to, mm -hmm. you know, use algorithms to give us much better sense. But the problem with all of this, it's statistical, and you're not a statistic. For you, everything's 100% it works or 0% it works. And, and you can't predict who you are. You only find out by doing it. And that's, and that's, that's why, because people wait almost yeah. too late to do it. Yeah, and that's also why we're so highly criticized, because you can't guarantee that it's going to work. Well, yeah, we can. It's biology. <laughs> what we can guarantee is you, won't, you will be infertile at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so, know? Serena, in your opinion, do you think egg freezing is for every woman? No, I think that it's a completely personal choice. I don't care as much as, like, is it guaranteed or not? Nothing like this guaranteed, right? Except for death and infertility, apparently. <laughs> uh, I think that what bothers me is how inaccessible it is mm -hmm. and how much of a luxury it is. $17,000 is some, someone's salary in some places. Yeah. I mean, like, they, it's a lot of money. That, that's what I find unfair about it. Yeah, for sure. And I think that there's not enough information, there's not enough discussion about women's reproductive rights, healthcare. I think the entire question, entire debate about abortion is so fundamentally tied to egg freezing as well. There's so much internalized misogyny and stigma when it comes to this. You know, we talk about it openly, like we're in New York, like we're smart, but I think that in other places it's very taboo and it's very stigmatized and it's, it's for the like old woman that couldn't figure it out and get pregnant. And I don't think that that's true. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of reasons why you should yeah, do that. I, I think that narrative's changing a lot, and especially with the data that's been put out there, that we've put out there. It's really, now I mean, it's become an option. Now it's become something that can work. So in your opinion, do you think egg freezing is for every woman? No, no, it's a personal decision. I agree completely with what she said. Somebody should not make this decision for you. You know, and I said, well, what would you tell your daughter? I tell my daughter exactly what I tell my patients that it's a choice, just like everything else in life is, and you have the choice and you have to own it. And if you don't own it, you won't have as good an outcome. If you make the choice yourself, if someone makes it for you, you're set up for a problem. Because if it doesn't work, you'll feel like, oh, I was talked into it. If it does work, you'll never question it. That's always the good side of it working. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to own these life choices because they matter. How many centers have babies from it? And what, what's their results? Not, centers don't tell you. A lot of patients come to see me after they've done consults everywhere else. Well, what did they tell you? How many babies they have? Oh, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't answer that. Why? Because some of them don't have babies from it yet. You need to go to a center that has a lot of experience. And so, Serena, I'm wondering, like, what are some things that you wish that you had known before you started doing it? That a lot of people are going to have opinions about it on the internet. Okay. In a way that's like, I have a thick skin, so I didn't really care, but it bothered me. Like, so I guess maybe I did care a little bit. <laughs> I mean, when you put something online, like, you're kind of just going to have to deal with the fact that people are going to say things. Um, but it was very misogynistic, a lot of the comments that I got. Yeah, and but they're talking about themselves. A hundred percent. But Thank so you, you have I to, agree. if you're going to put yourself out there, you just have to understand oh, that it's, I own not, it. it's not about you. It's about how they think about what you are saying. And, you know. Would you still have shared your experience knowing what you know now? A hundred percent, all of it. And I'm so glad I did. I think it's so important to ha for people to have the knowledge and ha have it young. And a lot of my audience is very young. Mm -hmm. I agree, I totally tune out the noise. I just was surprised like how much people projected their own. Well, even if you yeah. are very, you know, self-sufficient emotionally, it still is a bother to sift through all of that negativity so something else that i wish i knew and i was actually very careful about this was i chose to do was not share the number of eggs i got mm -hmm. and i couldn't believe that people were actually like commenting and like competing on my the comment section and i just think like that is something because that is really based in nothing you could have 20 eggs but if you're freezing them later they might not be mm -hmm. healthy you know, I, right? We, we have patients who got six eggs and got a baby. We have patients who got 36 eggs and so the, didn't exactly. get a baby. So the numbers are relevant, at <laughs> least towards your friends and stuff. So that was a choice that I made. But that's something I didn't know before. I think right? that was a good decision. Yes. I'm just wondering, how many patients have you seen who regret their decision to have their eggs frozen? There are many. Oh. Um, it's not. A, it's a small percentage of the total. I think most. Most patients, certainly the ones who get a baby from it, I mean, gosh, okay. they'll write letters so nice my mother wouldn't believe it, but um, I, don't, I shouldn't take credit for nature. I mean, it's just luck, some of it. Right. But there are some patients who are pretty angry about the outcome. They think we did something wrong with their eggs, but there are many patients who when their eggs were thawed and they didn't get a baby from it, were actually still glad they did it because it helps them through the process of managing their grief of 
in their infertility and then mm -hmm. finding a solution for it. Uh, because that's a real tough emotional journey. When it works, everybody's happy and it's great, but it's when things don't work out, how do you resolve that? What do you do? Do you do egg donor? Do you adopt? Do you, you know, have a life without a child that you intentionally make that choice and make peace with yourself about that? It's, it, it's a really difficult yeah. place. And, you know, many of the patients who froze their eggs, who the outcome was bad, um, you know, really struggled. And, and but that helped them many of them and some of them they just were angry and felt victimized and felt upset they felt like they were lied to they thought it would work mm -hmm. you know and, and I know what we say we never say it's 100 percent to anybody and that's a really important discussion and we have it you know it's hard patients don't want to hear it and many hear it but don't hear it and then re regret that they never heard it but they know they did yeah. <laughs> sometimes more of a psychologist than a than a, a, a reproductive specialist but it's part of it it, it really tracks. is it's a really emotional process um thank you both so much for sharing your expertise and your experience so after the discussion what does dahlia decide i think based on everything that we've talked about and all of the really great information um, you both have shared today i really do think that i am going to begin the process of looking into freezing my eggs and obviously I have to see if I'm a good candidate. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of testing involved and perhaps even my employer would cover part of it. I think I'm gonna go for it because I like the idea of having a little bit of a backup plan. Exactly, nothing's certain in life, yeah. but like at least you have some autonomy over it. And I think you'll find the process to be very empowering. Thank you, I, I appreciate that insight. And then when you go for the consult, you're gonna learn not just about the process, but you're gonna learn about your potential and your expected chances of success and you should use that information to refine your decision. Most important, ask a lot of questions. And write them down. And write them down. <laughs> well, thank you again both very much. This has been really helpful. Are you thinking about freezing your eggs? Let us know in the comments below.